uh, first you must know what is this photoelectric effect have you heard of this photoelectric effect yes hmm. photo means light here electromagnetic energy <laughs> to be bundled into little packets called photons generally sunlight is composed of photons because you know sunlight has seven different wavelengths this is called white light the white light has seven different wavelengths each and every wavelength differ in their uh, each and every waves differ in their wavelength they have electric field as well as magnetic field both will propagate in perpendicular direction to each other so when you consider this light ray as a particle this particle is filled with energy this is fast moving electron the electron present in this electromagnetic energy of the sunlight is called photons so when you consider the sunlight in the form of particle nature each and every discrete particle which contains certain amount of energy is called photon energy of photon will be equal to h nu h is planck's constant here nu is the frequency see here the constant value for h is the 6.62 into 10 to the power negative 34 joule per second into frequency of the electron is multiplied in the sense you will get the energy of this photon now what is this photoelectric effect we are going to see imagine this is the metal surface this is the metal whenever you place any metal under sunlight say aluminium or it could be any metal we are going to place it shiny polished metal under the sunlight what will happen it seems to be very bright why it seems to be very bright in the sense here you could see that h nu is nothing but photon is hitting the surface of the metal hitting the surface of the metal in the sense i'll go to the new page imagine this is the metal metal is made up of metal atoms let us take this metal piece or metal is aluminium aluminium is made up of aluminium atoms aluminium atoms are having nucleus and their own electrons these are the electrons revolving around the nucleus inside as long as this aluminium is placed under the sunlight the electrons are going to revolve in its own path say two electron eight electron three electrons are there inside each aluminium atom these are the valence electrons now what is going to hit on this metal surface this is one photon with its own frequency you know very well photon has energy the energy is going to be transferred on the surface of the metal on the surface of the metal in the sense it is going to transfer to the aluminium atom you know very well electrons has the ability to excite as the energy is given to the atom here two electrons are there eight electrons are there here we have two electrons electrons as soon as they get the energy what will happen they will jump from lower energy level to higher energy level think of the electron which is present in the valence shell valence shell is the last shell of an atom electron present in the valence shell is called valence electron it has three valence electrons what will happen they will jump out of the shell when they jump out of the shell see what electron is ejected 
from the atom so it will escape from the metal surface with particular velocity how it is escaping from this metal surface with particular velocity because of the photon hitting on the surface of the metal photon has energy the energy of the photon is equal to its frequency multiplied with planck's constant the energy is transferred to the metal atom inside the metal atom one and only particle which is continuous motion or has energy is electron so electron will be excited from lower energy level to higher energy level the electron which is present at the last energy level will come out of the atom and it will escape with particular velocity so this is only going to be observed how it is going to escape how it is going to propagate it is also moving with particular wavelength wavelength is the distance between two consecutive crust or two consecutive trough so this wavelength is going to be measured with the help of this spectroscopy did you understand so this yes. is the role of the spectroscopy so what is the use of analyzing the spectroscopy in the sense spectrum you would have come across about spectrum in the sense color different patches of color is called spectrum all the colors we know seven principal colors all these colors are differ in their wavelengths suppose through spectroscopy one electron is escaping if you observe this electron in the form of red color in the sense red color has its own wavelength red color has the highest wavelength if you observe this electron with violet color violet color has the least wavelength violet color has least wavelength and high frequency so this is the role of this spectroscopy so this is possible only under photoelectric effect the photon has to hit on the surface of the metal so that electron will be escaped out of the metal atoms in which velocity in which wavelength the electrons are escaped from the metal atom is measured with the help of spectroscopy so come over here again hmm photo uh, see here the energized electron energized electron in the sense electron which is present in the outermost shell will be excited overcome their attraction and escape from the surface yes because it is excited because of energy it is revolving with maximum speed so it will go out of its shell and it will come out of the metal atom and it will escape this is the electron with its velocity kinetic energy the energy possessed by the moving electron is going to be measured photo electron spectroscopy what is this photo electron spectroscopy it detects the kinetic energy of the electron escaped from the surface so this photo electron spectroscopy is going to find the kinetic energy or velocity of the electron which is escape from the surface ఎలక్ట్రాన్ <laughs> uh does not experience the photoelectric effect ground state it is revolving in its own energy level 
this is core level in the sense ground state what is this photon what is going to attack photon so photon is going to excite the electron ground state ground state in the sense as long as the electrons are revolving in its own path that state is called core level or ground state so photon is going to hit on the <coughs> electron this is the initial state what will happen after the photon is hitting on the electron which is present in the ground state see here imagine this photon is hitting on this electron did you understand so what will happen yeah. the electron the photon transfers its energy on this electron so what will happen this electron will excite that state is called excited state when it is excited what will happen it will move away from its path see here this is the electron it is ejected out from its path whereas another electron is present in the ground state did you understand there was two electron there were one was transferred with energy with the help of photon so it is moving away from its place so here this is the kinetic energy this is the vacuum level in the sense this is the standard level which was taken so this is the kinetic energy here the kinetic energy of this electron not kinetic energy so the total distance displaced by the electron is equal to h nu because because of the energy of this photon only this much amount of kinetic energy is acquired this is planck's constant okay yeah photo electron spectroscopy uh, a single photon in electron out process okay we are going to talk about only one photon how it is ejecting one electron x-ray photo electron spectroscopy is shortly called as xps there are two different uh, spectroscopy will be there one is ups ups in the sense ultraviolet ray ultraviolet ray uv ray would have come across uv with the help of uv light what is going to be ejected electron is going to be ejected that is called ups ultraviolet rays photo electron spectroscopy and another one ray can be used x-ray so the uv ray x-ray all are having their own wavelength okay see yeah. x-ray can also be used for ejecting electron by using x-ray if you eject electron that electron can be absorbed by photo electron spectroscopy that is called xps with the help of x-ray you are going to eject the electron using soft x-ray x-ray where do we use in our everyday life to take the photo of our broken bone yeah yeah one second typically let me have few water yeah yeah so using soft x-ray this is 200 to 2000 electron volt energy is possessed by the x-ray radiation to examine core level core level in the sense when the electrons are present in their ground state another one photo electron spectroscopy i said ultraviolet ups Al by using ultraviolet radiation how are you going to examine valence electron so the previous one x-ray is going to be used for core every electron inside the atom but the ultraviolet 
photoelectron spectroscopy is going to be used only for radiation to examine the valence electrons okay last electrons look at the picture electron photoelectron spectroscopy this is electron analyzer electron energy analyzer this is the sample in the sense the metal piece you have placed can you see this is the metal either you are going to pass uv ray or x ray on the metal surface so what will happen uv ray has particular wavelength x ray has particular wavelength that is going to hit on the metal surface and it transmit the energy on the electron so what will happen electron will eject am i right the electron will eject yes. with particular wavelength that will be analyzed by the electron energy analyzer that's all this is the chamber in which a pump so some setup would be there for carry out this process okay so here how it is going to be related with this i will tell you molecular energy ionization energy these are all higher level no need i will show you one graph count per second 17 thirteen hit seal gas so whenever the photon is hitting on the electron what will happen the electron will come out of the metal surface so loss of bonding electron loss of bonding electron in the sense electron is going to detach from the metal atom decreases the bond order what is this bond order bond order in the sense the bond which is existing between the binding molecule this is bond order 1 oxygen binds with another oxygen by double bond bond order is 2 suppose this electron is getting affected and it will escape in the sense from bond order to bond order will be decreased into what one a nitrogen combines with nitrogen by triple covalent bond and whenever the electrons are excited from three bond order it goes to two then it will come as one because the binding electrons are getting affected by this photons so loss of bonding electron decreases the bonding order whenever the bonding electrons are escape bond order will decrease bond order is nothing the number of bond which is found between the binding atoms when the bond order decrease increasing the bond length in the resulting cation compared to the parent molecule bond order number of bond decreases in the sense bond length will increase okay then loss of non bonding electrons non bonding in the sense the electron which is present inside the atom core has no effect on bond order and bond length so only the energy change or the change is going to be brought by bonding electron when the bonding electron escape out it will decrease the bond order and it will increase the bond length loss of an anti bonding electron what is this anti bonding even though the electrons are present in the outermost orbit they don't involve in bonding molecular energy level diagram we did do you remember yes we do i am <coughs> mo theory so loss of an anti bonding so the electron which is not involving in bonding is kept out in the sense that increases the bond order decreasing the bond length so these are the three points by using this only this graphical representations are going to be done look at the first one nitrogen molecule 
when nitrogen molecule combine nitrogen atom combines with another nitrogen atom that gives nitrogen molecule bond order is 3 when this bonding electron is escaped in the sense bond order will decrease bond length will increase see here ionization energy ionization energy uh, yeah so according to the frequency of electron this graph is drawn okay hmm. see here this is the electronic configuration of nitrogen molecule according to mo theory bond length is 1.09 but when the electrons are excited it becomes positive because electron escaped bond length increases here this is also bond length increases continuously the electrons are going to escape this is bonding this is anti-bonding electron bond length increases oh this is anti-bonding sorry this is anti-bonding this is bonding anti-bonding bond length increases bonding electron bond length decreases according to this what will be drawn the graph will be drawn okay that is called vibrational frequencies vibrational frequency is going to be drawn on the graph so this one how the electrons are vibrated is drawn over here peak shift charging effect broadening molecular solid bonding so the peaks are telling us about charging effect and this broadening this area is going to be tell us about molecular solid bonding and relaxation effect there is no energy is released nor re released neither released nor absorbed so these peak areas are excitation of electrons okay see here uh, this is the X-ray which is hitting on this electron, core electron and electron is escaping with particular velocity. And here also, uh, okay, this is also one electron is escaping. Binding energy, which orbit it is, first one, second one, third one, correct. So it is going to affect the core. Mm, primary particle okay it is affecting it is hitting on all the electrons three electrons are according to the frequency of electron ejected this peaks are given okay that's all the like this only hmm? yeah okay i understood it okay. uh, the can... spectroscopy is nothing it is going to tell us about the which velocity this electrons are going to be ejected when photon is falling on that can be absorbed by the spectroscopy that is called photoelectron spectroscopy. Okay. You can go to questions on my mom's side. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Use this PES elect, uh, spectra below to answer questions 1 to 4. Relative number of electrons is taken. Binding energy is also taken. Binding energy as well. Okay, binding energy, 1, 2, 3, 4, do you have the questions with you, da? Yes, I do. Hmm. There are 5 peaks with 5 different frequencies. 
So what element does the spectra represent? How many peaks are there? There are five peaks. So since it has five peaks, boron has three valence electrons. Nitrogen has uh, three valence electrons. Aluminium also has three valence electrons. Phosphorus has five valence electrons. So five valence electrons would have been escaped. So answer would be D. Got it? Yeah. It is based on the valence electron. Number of valence electron, the peaks. Okay. So I will come back to the board. One is D. What explanation they have given? The element has five peaks, meaning a total of five subshells. What is the total five subshells? This is phosphorus. Phosphorus atomic number is 15. 1 is 2. 2 is 2. 2 P6. 3 is 2. 3 P3. 3 is 2. 3p3 totally how many subshells it has five subshells 1s 2s 2p 3s and 3p these many subshells it has the final peak which would be located in the 3 P subshell final peak is present between 3P 1s2, 2s2, 2P3, 2s2. Okay. Is slightly higher than 3S peak to the left of it. Okay. The left. 3s okay binding energy a full 3s peak has two electrons therefore there must be at least three electron in the 3p subshell the element that best fit in this phosphorus okay two electrons uh, can you see the peak the last peak before the last peak, there is 2.2. Can you see? Yes. Uh, that is equal to two electrons. So the remaining would be somewhat the peak is little height. So three electrons would have been occupied. That's what it is predicted as phosphorus. Which peak represent the two years subshell? Second question. 2s. The peaks in order represent B. The peak at 6.84. So it is an order only, Deepika. What order in the sense? There are 5 peaks. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. This is 1s, 2s. 2p, 3s, 3p. Okay. This is 3s, 3p. So what is the question? Which peak represent the 2s orbital? This one. With 6.84 something energy. B is the answer. Then third one, an electron from which peak would have the greatest velocity after ejection? The peak at 1.76, 1.76, 1.76, 1.76. 
1.76 is the last one. 1.76. D. What is the question? An electron from which peak would have the greatest velocity after rejection because the electron present in the outermost orbit will have largest energy. So that is 3p. Peak represents 3p. Uh, less ionization energy that is required to remove an electron, the more kinetic energy that electron will have after rejection. Okay. Or also D, what is it? Valence electrons are those in the outermost energy level. In this case, that is the third level, which has five valence electron in it. That is 3s and 3p. Okay, what is the question? We will see. How many valence electron does this atom have? Five. Okay, five electrons. Okay, next question. After this, we have sent question number 11, 12. Yeah. Okay. Until After four. Uh, five is so seven. I think the pictures are not in order because when you send, sometimes the pictures are good. Okay, okay. Five, I found it. Why does an ion of phosphorus that is P3 minus have? A larger radius than neutral atom of phosphorus. Uh, what would be the answer in the sense? D option. The electron in P3 minus have a greater coulombic repulsion than those in the neutral atom. Hmm. The ion has three more electrons than the neutral atom, meaning the overall repulsion will be greater. The electron will push one another away more effectively, creating bigger radius. You must know one thing. Fifth also, D. Always, if you take metal atom, metal atom will be bigger than metal ion. Metal ion is the daughter. Metal ion is a parent. Because metal has to lose electron. When it loses its electron, one shell will be not there. So when the shell is not there, what will happen? The radius of the atom will be less. So always cation will be smaller than the fifth one we are talking about. Cation is smaller than parent atom. Parent metal atom will be bigger. Deepika, are you following that? Yeah, I'm following. But anion will be bigger than parent non-metal. Why? Because non-metal has to accept electron. Where it accepts electron, number of electron will be more than the parent. The electron is going to be added in the same shell. There, the electrons are going to experience repulsive force. When they repel from each other, the radius of the atom increases. So, anion will become bigger than the parent non-metal. That is the reason. Sixth one. A compound is entirely made up of silicon and oxygen atom. If there are 14 grams of silicon and 32 grams of oxygen is present, what is the empirical formula of the compound? 14 grams of silicon.
32 grams of oxygen. What is the embryical formula of the compound? Embryical formula of the compound is SiO4. Let us find why it is SiO4. So the compound has silicon and oxygen. Silicon. 14 gram silicon atomic mass is 28 so 0 0.5 is the mole oxygen 32 gram is given atomic mass is 16 so 2 0 0.5 is the least mole so this is 1 0 0.5 2 divided by 0 0.5 is 4 so there is only one silicon atom oxygen atom should be 4 this would be the empirical formula when the mass of silicon is 14 mass of oxygen is 32 ok Deepika yeah so option is B. Seventh one. The diagram below shows the relative atomic sizes of three different elements from the same period. Same period X, Y, Z. Which of the following statements must be true? The effective nuclear charge will be the greatest in element X. No. The first ionization energy will be greatest in element X. As you move from left to right, ionization energy increases. No. The electron shielding effect will be greatest in element is said the electronegativity value will be greatest as you move from left to right electronegativity increases uh, so here part question moving across a period atomic size decreases that is correct therefore element is it will be farthest to the right have the most proton and thus will have the highest electronegativity value. Z will have more electronegativity. Correct. P is that. What they have given X, Y, Z. As you move from left to right, electronegativity increases. So last option is it has high electronegativity, correct? So that is the correct answer. D is the correct answer. Eighth one. Yeah. The first ionization energy for a neutral atom of chlorine is 1.25 megajoule. per mole and the first ionization energy of neutral atom of argon is 1.52 how would the first ionization energy value for neutral atom of potassium compare to those values ok chlorine argon they are asking for potassium oh. ok Potassium, what could be potassium? Let us go to the page. Chlorine has three shells. Two, eight, seven. Argon 
as 288 these three belongs to third period potassium belongs to fourth period the electron is very far away from the nucleus when it is compared with chloron chlorine and argon so chlorine has 7 argon has 8 first of all these two are not having ionization energy it will have electronegativity and argon does not have anything so ionization enthalpy is the property of metal first of all so potassium will lose its valence electron more readily so ionization energy of potassium will be lesser than chlorine and argon because chlorine is non metal it does not have ionization energy argon will not lose electron so metals property and that to potassium has four valence electron four shells the electron is present in the last shell so it will have less energy when it's compared with argon and chlorine so option would be d d what option it would be less than both because valence electron of potassium is farther from nucleus than one of either argon or chlorine okay ninth question neutral atoms of chlorine are bombarded by high energy photons causing the ejection of electrons from the various filled subshells electrons originally from which subshell would have the highest velocity after being ejected so the photon is going to hit all the electrons but what is the question which electron will have more velocity after being ejected so which electron is last electron that will have more energy let us see chlorine chlorine where uh, atomic number 17 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p5 so definitely electron present in the p orbital will have more energy so option c 3p always the electron which is present in the outermost orbit will have more energy than the other electrons okay the average mass in grams of one mole of carbon atom is equal to average mass in grams of one mole of carbon is equal to the average mass of single carbon atom measured in am us the ratio of number of carbon atom to mass of single carbon atom the number of carbon atom in 1 am of carbon the mass in grams of most abundant isotope of carbon the average mass of a single carbon atom measured in am first option a is the answer eleventh one hmm. Hmm. which of the following statements is true regarding sodium and chlorine which of the following statement is true regarding sodium and chlorine sodium has greater electronegativity and larger first ionization energy wrong because it has high less electronegativity and low ionization energy so
sodium has larger first ionization energy and larger atomic radius larger atomic radius is correct but less ionization energy chlorine has larger atomic radius and greater electronegativity greater electronegativity is correct large atomic radius is wrong chlorine has greater electronegativity and larger first ionization energy d is correct okay deepika better yes. chlorine is present in the right extreme so it will be having higher electronegativity and less ionization energy uh, sorry for most ionization energy 12th one an atom of silicon in its ground state is subjected to a frequency of light that is high enough to cause electron ejection an electron from which subshell of silicon would have highest kinetic energy after ejection so silicon atomic number is 14 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p2 so it will have 3p 13th थर्टींथ रेज फॉर इंफ्रारेड रेडियशन रेडियशन टेन टू दि पवर नेगटिव फाइव मीटर while that of ultraviolet radiation is 10 to the power minus 14 4 meter is it 4 4 six, 5 6 clear all okay which type of radiation has more energy and why question number is 13 Thirteen option A. Ultraviolet energy. Ultraviolet has more energy because it has higher frequency. Okay. Okay. Ten to the power four. Okay. Option A. Thirteenth one. A. UV ray has more energy. because it has high frequency then infrared radiation 14th one a photoelectron spectra for which of the following atom would show peaks at exactly three different binding energies first one is four proton beryllium sodium argon aluminum beryllium sodium argon aluminum photo electron has peak exactly three different binding energy three different beryllium it could be d let us see Fourteenth one B. How many electrons it has? Three binding energies. Okay. Ten proton, ten neutron, neon. 
Leon has. It is B. The atom neon. It has 10 protons, 10 neutrons, and it has 8 valence electron. What is the question they have asked? Photoelectron spectra for which of the following atom would show peaks at exactly three different binding energies? Binding energy. Okay. 15. Examining data obtained from mass spectroscopy. Support which of the following? Mass spectroscopy. Support which of the following? D. The common oxidation state of elements, atomic size trends within the period, ionization trend within the period, the existence of isotope. So mass spectroscopy, existence of isotope. Because isotopes only, this is mass spectroscopy. Isotopes will differ in their masses. So it tells us about the mass. Sixteenth one. In general, do metals or non-metals from the same period have higher ionization energy? Why? In a period, non-metal will have higher ionization energy. There is no doubt. Why? Metals have higher ionization energy because they usually have more proton than non-metal. Wrong. Non-metal have higher ionization energy because they are larger than metal and harder to ionize. Metals have higher ionization energy because there is less electron shielding. Non-metal higher energy because they are closer or closer to having filled a complete energy level. Uh, very good. Last one. Non-metals have higher ionization energy because they are closer to having filled the complete energy level because the size of the non-metal is very, very small so that Removal of electron needs a lot of energy. Rather, removal, it gains electron. Okay, this is done. This is done. This is also done. The answer is D over here. Because non-metal is small in size. Okay. Yeah. And... Question number 17. Yeah. The ionization energies for an element are listed in the table below. Ionization energy first, second, third, fourth. Based on the ionization energy table, the element is more likely to be. So, five ionization energies are given. Okay. It is three, it is two, it is one. And silicon has more likely to be B. What is B? Magnesium. Oh, magnesium. First ionization energy is less, second is more, third, fourth, fifth. Why magnesium? One second. Option B, magnesium. 1 is 2, 2 is 2, 2 B. 6, 3 is 2. Okay. How many electron it has to lose? Only 2. Okay. It is magnesium. Use the following information to answer question 18 to 20. The outermost electron of an atom has binding energy 2.5 electron volt. 
the atom is exposed to light of a high enough frequency to cause exactly one electron to be ejected. The ejected electron is found to have kinetic energy through electron fold. How much energy did photons and photons of the incoming light contain? Eighteenth one. See. How will you find this? R E is equal to binding energy plus kinetic energy. Okay. Binding plus kinetic. Binding 2.5, kinetic is so 4.5. Re is equal to binding energy plus kinetic energy. Binding is 2.5, kinetic energy is 2. So 4.5 electron volt. 19th one if the wavelength of the light were to be shortened how would that affect the kinetic energy of the ejected electron if the wavelength of the light were to be shortened wavelength shorten uh, how would that affect the kinetic energy frequency will be more frequency is more it will have higher okay high speed a shorter wavelength would increase the kinetic energy correct a yeah. because the wavelength is bigger in the sense speed will be less Wavelength is small in the sense frequency will be more and it will be having high velocity. You are going to bring down the velocity. Higher wavelength to lower wavelength in the sense. It will increase the frequency and it will acquire high velocity. So what will be the answer? A shorter wavelength would increase the kinetic energy. A is the option. Yes, okay. Hmm. Because this frequency and speed are related to each other, and the frequency and wavelength are just opposite to each other. Longer wavelength, lesser frequency. Okay, 21. Nitrogen's electronegativity values between those of phosphorus and oxygen. Phosphorus and oxygen. Which of the following correctly describes the relationship between the three values? This twenty. Twenty one is D. Nitrogen only has two shells of electrons. While phosphorus has three, making nitrogen smaller and more able to attract additional electrons, meaning higher electronegativity. Nitrogen and oxygen both have two shells, but oxygen has more proton and an effective nuclear charge is six. It is five. So thus oxygen has higher electronegativity. Mm. So it will attract. So twenty one is D. Why it is D? nitrogen oxygen below nitrogen we have phosphorus so it has less electronegativity than oxygen and phosphorus so it is compact in size nuclear charge is also less when it's compared with oxygen so accepting electron will be better by oxygen than nitrogen got it yes got 22 
ట్వంటీ సెకండ్ క్వశ్చన్ విచ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ అయాన్ వుడ్ హ్యావ్ మోస్ట్ అన్పేడ్ ఎలక్ట్రాన్ ఎమ్ అండ్ టూ ప్లస్ ఓకే వై ఎమ్ అండ్ టూ ప్లస్ మోస్ట్ అన్పేడ్ ఎలక్ట్రాన్స్ ట్రాన్సిషన్ మెటల్ లూస్ దేర్ ఎస్ ఎలక్ట్రాన్స్ ఫస్ట్ వెన్ ఫార్మింగ్ అన్ అయాన్ A manganese atom is initially argon with 4s to 3d5, but the ion becomes 3d5, which has a total 5 unpaired electron. Uh, okay, 4s to 3p5 with argon. so to acquire m and 2 plus it has to lose 4s electron so what will happen it will have 5 unpaired electron in sorry 3d 3d5 3d orbitals okay so 22 is done that's all the pika i think all we have done whatever your mother has sent yeah okay you just see the question if you have any question take yeah one Could you teach me the Haber process in chemical equilibria? Haber process is only for preparing ammonia. In the preparation oh. of ammonia. Uh, Haber process, not Haber process. Equilibrium will have Hessler that is different. That is an equilibrium energy level. Haber is preparation of ammonia. Yeah. find out some other concept haber process it is just preparation of ammonia in which ratio you are going to combine the hydrogen and nitrogen which are the conditions needed for preparing ammonia that is dealt in haber process it is just preparation of ammonia steric effect delocalization okay steric hindrance electronic effect all these things we have done we will do again electronic effect i know i've done but then when I, after i learned the concept when i do the questions i can't i it's very hard for me to do the questions so mm, electronic effect uh, i effect e effect will be there or effect let us do
I understand the concept for all three, but I can't do the questions. Uh, bring the question, then only we can see. Uh, I don't localization, have questions. Uh, uh, delocalization means... Uh, see... We did electronic de effect last year, I think. Mm -hmm. At the start of the year. See here, delocalization we are talking about. Localization means electrons are present in a particular position between any two atoms. This is the double bond. This is also double bond. The system which has alternate single and double bond is called conjugative system. Conjugative in the sense system which has alternate single and double. Here we have alternate single and double. This system is called conjugative system. Okay. In this the double bond, carbon bind with carbon by single covalent bond. This is more than enough. Whenever we have one more bond, this bond is excess. This is pi electron. So what will happen? The pi electron has the ability to move from higher concentration to lower concentration. But this aliphatic, aliphatic in the sense linear hydrocarbons, whenever they have double bond, these electrons are localized. Localized in the sense it is present in between first carbon and second carbon. That's all. It does not move anywhere. Third and fourth. This bond is between third and fourth. This is localized. Where? In aliphatic. Aliphatic in the sense the double bond which is present in the linear chain or in the branched chain. Then when it is going to be delocalized? When it is going to be delocalized in the sense in the cyclic compound? Benzene is the well-known example for a delocalized electron. Here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Double bond is lying with first and second, third and fourth, five and six. So let us take first, three, five. What do they say for benzene ring in the sense? Benzene ring has alternate single and double. Alternate single and double. So let us take the same position, one, two, 3, 4, I am giving in the clockwise direction. Double bond is lying with 2nd carbon, 4th carbon and 6th carbon. 2nd, 4, 6. Both are correct. This is called resonance. Resonance in the sense more than one structure we are assigning for a given molecule. So this tells us about Benzene has alternate single and double. Alternate single and double. So here the double bond has single bond. There is no problem. All carbon should bind among themselves by at least one bond. So all the single bonds are localized. It is found between the carbon atom exactly. But this double bond is delocalized. It can be lying between first and second, third and four, or five and six, or second and third, four and five and six and one. So here in this aromatic system, aromatic in the sense benzene, the electrons are not fixed between any two carbon atom. Did you understand? It is not common for any two carbon atom. Yes, it can be lying in between any of the carbon atom. That is only thing. It should be alternate single and double bond. So the electron which is found in the benzene is not localized. It is not particular for any two carbon atom. It can be anywhere inside the benzene ring. That's what we are trying. Electron cloud. It is common for all six carbon atoms, so that it is called delocalized. Did you understand? Yes. Common for all. So when it is common for all carbon atom in the sense, system should be cyclic. Suppose if it is linear in the sense, 
it cannot be lying anywhere this is localized electron localized delocalized only you can found with double bond because at least one bond should be there to be bonded with each and every atom so this is localized electron electron present in the benzene ring is delocalized it is common for all the atoms is called delocalized and what is the steric effect or steric hindrance steric for example let us take carbon binds with carbon and yeah this side ch3 this side ch3 uh this side we have ch2 this side we have ch2 no h2 will not come no 1 2 3 Yes, yeah, he has to only. Here he has to. Now, this is one metal, and this is one metal. No, this cannot come. Uh, hmm. It is alkene, butene. these two are non bonded identical group non bonded identical bulk atom bulk group that is one methyl this is one methyl non bonded they are not bonded directly but they are closer for example when you draw this is one methyl and this is one metal this and this is bind with carbon this is one hydrogen atom this is one hydrogen atom see these two are non bonded identical groups when they are identical what will happen they will repel each other am i right they will repel the repulsion which is going to be experienced repulsion experienced by non bonded groups when they are closer to each other repulsion experienced by non bonded group when they are closer to each other that hindrance is called steric hindrance so what will happen because of this in the sense it will move to the other end the earlier one was cis isomer cis in the sense identical groups are lying on the same side because of steric hindrance it will rotate to the next side this is trans so when they are far away from each other that is stable trans but toene this is cis but toene 1 2 3 so the cis and trans isomer is because of the steric hindrance identical groups are binding closer to each other in the sense they will repel so delocalization is found with aromatic system it is not common for any of the two carbon atom it is common for all the carbon atom in that system steric effect is the repulsive force which is experienced by the non bonded bulky group when they are very close to each other so they will repel when they repel they will move away how long they will move away where they don't have any repulsion they take up the position that also determine the geometry isomer cis isomer and trans isomer okay deepika yeah okay and electronic effect yeah electronic effect there are so many you have to identify on the questions i effect is there that is inductive effect there are two inductive effect minus i effect plus i minus inductive effect plus inductive effect this is one electronic effect 
and E effect, electromeric effect. That is also two types, minus E and plus E. And you would have studied about resonance effect or mesomeric effect. Can also be called as plus R minus R R plus M minus M. These many effects we have to know under electronic effect. Inductive inductive is electron displacement. The atom does not take up the electron. Just like tug of war. Electron is going to displace in a linear chain from its position, slightly away from its position. So which, uh, which side it will move or which side it will have a shift in the sense. Whenever a linear chain has full of carbon atom, at the end of the carbon atom it may have different group like halo atoms attached to the carbon or carbon with different number of hydrogen atom can also attach. So these two possible groups, one could be electron donating, another should be electron withdrawing. So whenever the electron is being withdrawn, what will happen? Electron is taken up from the carbon to itself. So entire chain will get positive charge. Whereas the atom which pulls the electron will get negative charge. So these effects, when are you going to have in the sense, in reaction mechanism, you have to identify them. And this electromeric effect, uh, complete shift of electron from multiple bond to the bonded atom. Inductive effect, just it is going to pull the electron towards itself. Polarization will happen. In the electromeric effect, ions will happen formation of cation and anion when this formation of cation and anion will happen when they take up completely the electron from one species to another species the species which snatch the electron will become anion the another one which has lost will become cation so this is permanent ions during electromeric effect positive and negative but in the inductive effects partial charges are going to be formed on this del you have to use delta plus and delta minus tells us about partial charges so polarization will happen during inductive effect, electromeric effect, formation of ions. And resonance and mesomeric effect is nothing. Electrons shift from higher concentration to lower concentration. So whenever you do this resonance or mesomeric effect, you have to draw and see the resonance effect of benzene first. How this electron is going to be shifted from one atom to another atom. What will happen to that particular atom when the electron is lost? When electron is lost, definitely that carbon will acquire positive. The adjacent carbon will acquire negative. And this shift will be continuously moving on because three alternate single and double bond will be there. So resonance, flow of electron, electromeric, formation of ions by completely snatching the electron. Inductive also, partial ions or partial uh, charges are going to be separated on the molecule. So this tells us about polarization. So this, where it will be helpful in the sense when you learn this organic reaction mechanisms, which effect is involved, you must know first that one, inductive or electromeric or resonance. Okay. Okay, this uh, you cannot have, I think you may not have in the form of question. You have to identify on the reaction mechanism. Okay, Deepika. Yeah. When the schools are going to reopen, did they tell you anything in your school? Um, now we are having home-based learning, so we have lessons from home. Home-based learning, are they teaching through online? Yeah. 
എവിടെ ക്ലാസ്